Nicholas Andrew, take you, Sarah Elizabeth Baird, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, according to God's holy law. In the presence of God, I make this vow. I, Sarah Elizabeth Baird, take you, Nicholas Andrew, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death does do part, according to God's holy law. In the presence of God, I make this vow. My wife and I <laughs> would like to thank you all for coming to share our special day. I could not be a happier man today. I would like to start with taking the opportunity to thank all the wedding guests who have gone to great effort and expense to be here today, especially the guests who have traveled the length and breadth of the country just to be here today, there are no words to express how much it means to us. A very big thank you from Sue, Richard and myself to all of you for coming here today to celebrate the marriage of daughter Sarah and now son-in-law Nick. A very big thank you also to all of us who have or will be playing their part. All the people here at Mitten Hall, and especially Jess, and for the music, Alex and his team, for the magic, Jason, and for the decorations. Well, there should have been more de balloons, but they were too expensive. <laughs> a apparently, it's all down to inflation. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, I'm Robin. I'm very proud to be asked to be Nick's best man for his and Sarah's wedding today. I'm sure most of you know who I am by now. And if you don't, I applaud you on sneaking in through the back door unnoticed for a free, lovely meal. <laughs> Great work. Finally, after three cancellations, Nick and Sarah are finally married. And Sue and I are delighted, Nick, that you are finally in charge. Oh, oh, sorry, apologies. There was a comma there, not a full stop. Sue and I are delighted that you are finally properly in charge of bins, nappies, the garden, and general tidying up. I am delighted to be standing here today talking about my new son-in-law, Nick. I would also like to say a big thank you to those of you, friends of Nick, who emailed me such nice comments about Nick himself. So many, so positive, but you don't want to hear them. A better example, one of you said that in marrying Sarah, Nick was punching way above his weight. Sarah reminded me recently as to how she and Nick met. In her own words, I looked across the dance floor and on the other side I saw an absolute hunk of a man. Broad shoulders, bulging biceps, good looker, dressed to kill. Great mover on the dance floor, 
he started gyrating and shimmying round. As he moved, right behind him, I could see Nick. And the rest, as they say, is history. As I'm sure the best man will have plenty of kind words to say about Nick, I'll move on to Sarah. It is my duty as father of the bride to sing the praises of my daughter. Years ago, there was a family holiday in Portugal. We were on an all-nighter at a karaoke bar. We got to sing as a family and another family. Oh, oh yes, put your hands up if you were there. We got to sing at 2.30 a.m. Despite numerous requests, they could not quite fit us in before they closed at 5 a.m. <laughs> Rachel, where are you? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two other fond memories of Sarah. Again on a family holiday. We used to play You Know. A lot of it will, uh, you will remember it. It was the card game, the one where the winner is the first to get rid of all their cards. One evening, Sarah jumped up for joy to celebrate getting rid of her last card. Unfortunately, as she jumped up, five cards could be seen to be stuck to her bikini bottoms. <laughs> And a few years later, and I'm sure that some of you from Bolton School may remember this, I received a telephone call from the headmistress. Sarah had been caught by a teacher allegedly smoking in the woods. Quite correctly, Sarah pointed out to me that she had not been caught smoking. Apparently she had started earlier than the others and had finished hers before the teacher turned up. Should have been a solicitor. On a more positive note, good humoured, good natured, fun, thoughtful, loving, caring, hardworking, got a mind of her own, strong-willed. Nick, you will have discovered already what boxes can be ticked. I would suggest quite a few. In fact, the whole blooming lot. <laughs> Thank you.
Nick and Sarah, the vows you are about to take are to be made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Like faces, that's what we like. Nicholas Andrew, would you take Sarah Elizabeth Baird to be your wife? Would you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Sarah Elizabeth Baird, will you take Nicholas Andrew to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Will you, the families and friends of Nick and Sarah, support and uphold them in their marriage, now and in the years to come? We will. Be well. That was a bit feeble, really, for such a big congregation. <laughs> we could do better than that, can't we? Yeah. It's like a pantomime. <laughs> make it, make it better. Go on. No. So let's try that one more time with feeling. Will you, the families and friends of Nick and Sarah, support and uphold them in their marriage, now and in the years to come. We will. Fantastic. Oh, didn't that feel good? <laughs> so, who brings this woman to be married to this man? I do. Thank you. Now, turn to face each other. Sarah, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Nicholas, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
You have always been there for me, supporting me, encouraging me, pushing me and guiding me in the right direction. You have always been supportive of my decisions, been a shoulder to cry on when I've needed it the most. My go-to guy. Andrew and Sue, you have raised a beautiful, confident, intelligent... <laughs> who wrote this speech? <laughs> Thoughtful, organised, stroppy... Sorry. Gob gobby, leader. Oh, sorry, I mean daughter. Daughter, not leader. <laughs> Sarah and I would like to thank you for all your help and support over the years, but for today, this special day would not have been like it is today without your help. You have made our day magnificent and spectacular, and for this we are truly grateful. Sue, your persistent <laughs> organisation, standards and leadership, <laughs> <laughs> With helping Sarah and helping Sarah has been duly reflected in the grandeur of the events today. You have made suggestions to Sarah at the right moment. Again, diplomatic, positively encouraged some decisions and given, shall we say, constructive feedback of others. We would like to give you this gift of a, a gratuity for your help and support today. Please stand and raise a glass and give a round of applause to my new in-laws, Andrew and Sue. Let's move on to the bridesmaids. Don't they look lovely? Can we have a round of applause for the bridesmaids? You have all been great friends to Sarah, not forgetting Lucy, who has been a fantastic sister, and Ellie, and I mean this loosely, adorable and special daughter. All the bridesmaids certainly look better than how they did at the end of the, the hen -boot. No doubt. Thank you to my ushers, my good friends, Matt and Alan. I'm proud to have you both as part of the wedding party. Thanks for your hard work for getting me to the church and calming my last minute nerves. Ladies and gentlemen, I know the bridal party look absolutely tremendous today, but let me tell you, behind the scenes, it wasn't all so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> there were temper tantrums, hissy fits, screaming and shouting and that was just the groom when his tie didn't arrive on time. <laughs> I'd just like to say how absolutely stunning she looks today in that beautiful dress. <laughs> absolutely breathtaking. Well that's enough about you Sue, it's not your day so give it a rest please. <laughs> The best man. Robin Austin. Also known as Flash. I've known Robin for over a decade and throughout this time he has been a dear loyal friend.
Kid, I go way back to our late teens and early 20s. Obviously me being the younger of the pair. When we joined the police together as kids, we actually ended up on the same team at Preston. The first time I saw him at Preston, he was sat on a swivel chair with his legs dangling whilst typing. <laughs> Kid, you know what I'm still... I'll never forget that moment. With a stupid grin on his face. It made me laugh so I sat next to him. <laughs> and it's all gone from there, really. <laughs> the pair of us were the youngest in the office and we got absolutely hammered by the older members of the team. Nick was known as the Yorkshire Terrier and myself as Flash for being a dopey 19 year old who couldn't make a brew and only got his driving license the week before. <laughs> I got rid more to be honest, as I, I was quite cocky, believe it or not, I know you don't think that, looking at me now. Nick would hide behind his ridiculously large hold all he used to carry around with him for absolutely no reason. So you guys who still work with him now, you know he carries a big cricket bag round with him, filled with balloons and party poppers, nothing in it. He told me he makes it look important, busy. He could actually get in it, to be honest. <laughs> Nick and I were partners for years and double crewed together in a car, 50 plus hours a week. So we know each other inside out and we've been through so much together. Nick is a great friend, amazing person, great listener, calm and patient. All things that stand him in good stead to be getting married to Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, I remember way back when we first met. You had dyed black hair and you used to look like Morticia from the Adams family. <laughs> Nick was obsessed with me for some reason. Being a little uncle fester. <laughs> oh. I used to be driving the car and Nick would always have a snooze in the passenger seat. Doesn't surprise you one bit, does it? And he'd always ask me to frequently go into the police station and visit the toilet. <laughs> Before I realised, he was obviously trying to bump into Sarah in the office, wasn't he? Morticia there she was. Dressed all in black, pale, dark hair, a bit creepy looking, but she was nice enough. Nice girl. <laughs> but really, Sarah. You were beautiful, both on the inside and out, caring, funny, and a great mother to your two gorgeous children. <laughs> and I couldn't be happy with you walked today on this crazy occasion. It's been a long time coming, but finally in the Dominican Republic, Nick put down his large Big Mac extra value meal and asked Sarah to marry him. To our surprise, Sarah actually said yes. Which has finally put to bed all those long-standing malicious rumours of Nick's long-time affair with Matthew Knowles. Yeah. Allegedly. It's kind of funny how a room full of things feels completely empty when you're not in the wings. How could I have known the fortune I would find? Peace deep in my bones The beauty day and night And you may Anywhere feel like home Home is where we live It's living by yourself Any other way The way our world 
touching every space and how it makes any place feel like friend, my partner in crime, and most of all, my soulmate. Sarah, thank you for waiting so patiently to be my wife. I first saw Sarah 10 years ago, and at the time I thought, wow, I need to speak with her. I first noticed Sarah walking down the corridor at work as she walked past me. I tried to make eye contact with her to say hello, but Sarah walked on past without any acknowledgement. <laughs> Blinkered. At this time I thought, oh really? Playing hard to get, are we? <laughs> At the time I didn't know anything about her, so I started asking around. Creepy. I was told she had baggage. <laughs> I 
And by this, I mean a two-year-old daughter called Ellie. But this didn't put me off. Instead, I thought I would ask her out for lunch. Sarah accepted my invitation and we went to lunch. The lunch date went well. I thought it. And I thought, wow, she's confident. <laughs> we went on a couple more dates and I thought about the baggage again. And I asked myself, how heavy can these bags be? <laughs> Sarah wanted to wait six months before I was introduced to Ellie. And at the time, I thought that was nice and responsible. So over the next six months, Sarah and I formed a relationship and fell in love. <laughs> I finally got to meet Ellie when the time was right. I thought to myself that it takes a great man to raise a child he didn't make, and I accepted the challenge. Wow, I did not know how heavy the baggage was. <laughs> And I was shell-shocked, to say the least. However, I was able to see how much of a fantastic mother Sarah is, and I got to see how caring and nurturing Sarah is. This made me fall madly in love with Sarah even more. I decided that, as Sarah has chosen me to be a life partner who was worthy enough to be introduced to her daughter, then I would take on the responsibility to raise Ellie ever since. Six years later, fast forward a little bit, I couldn't keep Sarah waiting any longer. We had decided to book a holiday to the Dominican Republic and I thought, what a better time to propose. It would be now or never. I contacted Andrew and arranged to meet with him. I met him at his house. He made me a coffee and I said, I'm thinking of asking Sarah to marry me when we go on holiday, if that's in order. At which point he replied in a well-pronounced dialect, I would be delighted. <laughs> we shook hands and I finished my coffee. I wiped the sweat off my palms before leaving the address with a spring in my step. I thought, oh, there is no going back now. I started shopping for a ring and found the perfect ring in plenty of time before our holiday. We packed for our holiday and I managed to place the ring in a sock, one of which did not have a hole in. The ring flew nine hours in my sock and I was worrying about it all the way. On arrival at the hotel, Sarah started searching my bag for something of hers. I leapt to her assistance to help. Um, at this point, I was able to move the ring so she wouldn't find it. After our evening meal, we went to the beach and sat on a bench. It was there I said to Sarah, how would you like to spend the week as an engaged couple whilst producing the ring? <laughs> Which was shining in the Bright, very bright. <laughs> <laughs>
Sarah burst out crying, nodding her head. Then after a few moments, when she could catch her breath, she said yes. There it was, her wait was finally over. <laughs> we were now engaged. No problem, anytime. Sarah, you are the most beautiful person inside and out. Being with you has shaped my life exactly how I dreamt. You are caring, sensitive, and amazing. I am so proud and lucky to finally call you my wife. my queen and my life partner. Today, you look so amazing. I can see why you were wanting it to be so perfect. I don't think it could be any more perfect. And the way you look today is truly perfect in every way possible. I feel like I am in a dream or a fairy tale. And soon someone's gonna come along and pinch me back to reality. You have given me the best gift in life, our gorgeous baby girl, Sophia. Sophia, our baby girl, who has just turned one a couple of weeks ago. You have made my life complete. You are the sweetest, beautiful, and adorable little lady with such a big personality already. Having you made me feel emotions I never knew I had. You are also a sleeper. Yes. <laughs> which makes daddy an even happier man. <laughs> and mommy. Always remember, baby girl, daddy loves you. <laughs> Ellie, I've watched you grow up into a kind, caring and confident young lady. From being not much older than a toddler, where your only word was, why? <laughs> and you hid behind your cereal boxes at the breakfast table, which you arranged routinely every morning. Then in the blink of an eye, we were having arguments when we had to homeschool over the lockdown period. <laughs> Sir, I was called. I will have you know. <laughs> Both. <laughs> How things have changed. I'm proud to have you as my stepdaughter and sister to Sophia.
On a more serious note, Sarah, Nick, marriage. It's all about understanding and communication. In the room today, we have uh, at least seven men, or possibly seven men, who between them have been married for over 200 years. And I'm going to ask them if they possibly could give you some tips, Nick. Apart from today, you need the ability to change your mind quickly. <laughs> Especially when you have an opinion, because you'll be wrong. <laughs> so, change your opinion. <laughs> Excellent advice. Elaine, can I answer the question? <laughs> Nick. You're getting ready to go out. She asks you which outfit. Disaster. You cannot win. But whatever you do, keep your eyes on Sarah and not on the football on the telly. <laughs> oh, Nick, um, thank you for asking for my advice. It's about, you need to. You basically need to have selective hearing development because you can't possibly take on all those instructions properly. Nick, after 31 years of marriage, this is my book of tips. There's plenty in here. However, I've been asked to share one with you. So, Nick, do not ever expect to hear from your wife, yes, dear, I was wrong. <laughs> is when she asks you an opinion on what she's wearing. Okay. You've heard the expression, does my bum look big in this? Say yes. <laughs> Who the hell knows? <laughs> it's a minefield. The answer is always, well, what do you think, dear? <laughs> Nick and Sarah, Sue and I are delighted that you are now Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Nick and Sarah are in love with one another, and I'm so proud of such an important part of their special day. As well as everyone else here, I love you both a bit, and I couldn't be happier for you on this special occasion. Live for today. It goes quickly, but that is why everything is so much more beautiful. Cross bridges as you come to them, and don't worry about the future, because you'll run faster, you'll stretch your arms out further, and it's only going to get better from this moment onwards. Please may we all raise a glass to the wonderful couple, Nick and Sarah, and wish them all the absolute best in their future endeavors. To family, friends, and long, healthy lives. Cheers. Raise your glasses and drink a toast to Sarah and Nick Miller, the bride and groom. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Nicholas Andrew and Sarah Elizabeth Baird have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. Nick and Sarah are now married. And so at this point in the service, it's kind of a custom to say to, to Nick, you may kiss the front.